Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. In this video, I'm going to explain the couple different hole types that you have to choose from for your boat. So you basically have single holes and multi holes. Single holes are what you see cruise ships, most of the pleasure craft on the lake. There's just one hole. It's a giant tub that everybody sits in. Multi holes are your catamarans and other sorts of craft. Uh, multi holes encompass anything from two and up. I've never seen more than three, but and I've actually built uh, a three and a one. I'll go over the kind of the uh, pluses and minuses here in a bit, but keep that in mind. We'll get to that in a little bit. Of the different, so you'll settle on one of these, but then you also kind of have to pick what your whole shape is going to look like. Well, if we look at it from the side, which is like this, there are several different styles of hole. So you've got your single and your multis, but then you have displacement, semi-displacement, and planing. What this means is, if it's a displacement hull, it means it's going to just sit there and displace a bunch of water. If it's semi-displaced, actually, let's jump to the other extreme. If it's a planing hull, while it's sitting still, yes, it's just going to sit there and displace a bunch of water. But once it starts to move, its hull shape is going to create dynamic pressure that's essentially going to help lift the boat out of the water. And then once it's lifted out of the water, it's going to have a smaller weighted area because there's less boat in the water now. Well, that's great. The problem with planing hulls is it takes an awful lot of power to get up over your wake. I don't think there's a rowboat in the world that can actually do that. So we're pretty well stuck in the world of displacement hulls, meaning we're always going to displace the same amount of water in our boat no matter how fast we're going. Uh, Semi-displacement is a, a hole design that's in between the two, but we don't have to worry about that because we're nowhere near uh, going to be able to plane ever. So we're stuck with a displacement hull, and then we just got to choose single or multi. Here you have a couple of hole forms to choose from. Obviously there are many more than this, but here are a few basic ones that I'm going to talk about real quick. You basically see one type of boat in most races. You have a giant cardboard tub that is basically rectangular. So, if you're going to go that route, there's two ways to do it. You can either build a very uh, shallow and wide hole, or you can build a very narrow and deep hole. Reason for this is both of these shapes are very stable. I've drawn sample water lines in here. The blue dot is where the center of buoyancy is for that shape. For a rectangular shape, assuming your boat is longitudinally out this way symmetric, then it's simply in the center of wherever your water line is to the keel of your boat. Smack dab in the middle of that, simple enough. Uh, you'll occasionally see some variation of a V-shaped hole. This is also fairly stable. And I'm going to get into uh, stability calculations in another video, so stick around for that. This will just kind of get you going uh, in a basic sense. The center of buoyancy for an inverted triangle like this, uh, the triangle's centroid, which is the, the center of all its stuff, uh, we'll call it, uh, is one-third the distance from the base. So our base in this case is on the top since our triangle's upside down. Uh, so we just come down a third from the water line. Center of buoyancy is about there. Uh, triangles are pretty good. Uh, they also don't have a whole lot of weighted area, whereas you know uh, squares and rectangles do. Uh, weighted area contributes to drag, so you want to try to minimize weighted area. Uh, so this is part of the iterative process I've been talking about. At the absolute worst extreme, you have a semicircular shape or like a log. Um, its center of buoyancy is right in here somewhere. I'm not sure the equation offhand. I'll get to that when we go to actually calculate it. Um, centroid of a semicircular area. Centroid down from the y is 4r over 3 pi. So, if you care. The problem with this shape here is it has real no tendency to right itself. It's characterized by really long, slow rolls. Uh, so you definitely want to stay away from a semicircular shape. Most of the racing shells that you see out on the river are more of a, there's, they're in each case a special shape, more of a paraboloid or, you know, something like that. But they're all inherently unstable uh, because they've targeted the minimum wetted area rather than stability. They've got those long oars and extremely skilled racers that keep them upright. Well, we're pretty well amateurs at this, so we're going to stay away from uh, inherently unstable shapes. Otherwise, you're going to capsize your cardboard boat, and once it's capsized, cardboard really usually didn't do very well. So, what you can do uh, is, you know, choose one of these two here. That one's okay. Or you can, you know, sort of make a hybrid. 
you know, put slope sides on your uh, flat bottom. Or, of course, you can always add, you know, more faces. You could do something, you know, like this, add four faces. Um, up to the limit where you keep adding faces, you end up approximating a semicircle, so definitely don't do that. Uh, add the minimum that's necessary. Good compromises, really. If you build these correctly, you can get away with it, and I'll show you how we're going to do that, maybe. Uh, this one's fine, and that one's fine. So, hopefully that helps you understand this just a little bit. Uh, in other videos, I'm going to show you how to calculate center of buoyancy, and we're going to dive in a little bit deeper into the stability calculations, because I'm betting that if you're watching these videos, you probably care about some heavy math. And if you don't, this will get you going. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.